Hi Leo, welcome to January 2020. Happy New Year. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So this month we have a full moon in Cancer on January 10th. And then Uranus goes direct in Taurus on the 11th. And Pluto and Saturn come together in Capricorn on the 12th. So mid-month is going to be crazy. And then we have a new moon in Aquarius, which falls in your relationship sector. And that will be on the 24th, a new moon in Aquarius. So let's see what the cards say about love and relationships for January 2020 for Leo. What does Leo need to know about love and relationships for January 2020? Let's see what's coming up for Leo. What does Leo need to know about love and relationships for January 2020? The Knight of Pentacles, the Five of Wands, the Ten of Swords, the Death Card, the Two of Cups, the Four of Swords, the King of Swords, the Eight of Cups, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Seven of Swords. So this is interesting. Um, the Knight of Pentacles. This is a card, if you're dealing with, if this represents a person, it could be an earth sign. Someone who's very methodical, very careful, practical, down to earth. Someone who's willing to work hard for what they want in life. Um, you could, and this could also be energies within you that you're deciding in January to take things slow and to create something. You're looking for some kind of um, security. You're looking to build something that's going to help you to feel more secure financially and even. Um, in other areas of your life. With the Five of Wands crossing this, there could be some conflict around relationships. Maybe you're arguing with someone over petty details or you're feeling like you've been fighting. Uh, it could be an internal struggle, like you're trying to make a decision about a relationship and you're in conflict about what to do. Or it could be that you're, you're with someone that you've been um, not really seeing eye to eye with. Because um, I'm seeing this Ten of Swords and the Death card in the past. So for some of you, you might have just come out of a relationship. Something ended. A cycle is ending with the Ten of Swords. So you could be coming out of a relationship or um, healing from the ending of a relationship. The Ten of Swords is when you reach the end of the line and you just can't give it any more energy. And then especially with the Death here, it's like some a cycle in your life is ending and you're preparing for a new cycle to come in. But you are also going through some type of healing. Um, so it could be whatever is, whatever has been, you're coming out of a dark time with the Ten of Swords. Like the Ten says like the worst is over and now you have to make some major changes in your life and to bring in new energy. So you could be, um, something has come to completion, something has ended, it could be a relationship, it could be a job, it could be some something that has been uh, worrying you for a long time, maybe even a legal situation, but something is completing. And it's already started, like this is in the past, so you've already um, experienced, you might have already experienced this completion. And now maybe you're struggling about where to go next or what to do next. The Two of Cups here is coming up in the future, so there's a potential to partner with someone. The Two of Cups is soulmate energy. Um, and so there could be a new relationship that helps you to heal, someone that you turn to for healing, because this Four of Swords is here. Uh, it's like this is a card of recovery. So you may have gone through some type of crisis, either in your, it could be even your health, a health crisis. Or a relationship crisis. And now you're taking time out to heal. But you have someone close to you with the Two of Cups 
there is someone that you can depend on, someone that's there for you, that's going to be helping you through this process. You have the King of Swords here. Um, so you could also be dealing with an air sign, um, which could be Gemini, Aquarius, Libra. This person, um, the King of Swords, can be someone who's very... Um, sees things in black and white. And this could be, this is also in your negative thinking sector. So you might be really trying to sort things out. I feel like this could be you trying to make decisions. You're going to be making decisions in this month. Trying to separate what's real from what's not real. Trying to figure it all out. And figuring out what I need to keep, what do I need to let go of, what's real. Who are the people that are close to me um, that I can depend on. Um, this could be a person, and it could also be qualities within you. So it could have two two separate meanings. Um, I feel like there's a person close to you that's going to help you through this difficult time. Someone that is very logical, doesn't get carried away by emotion. Someone who has good advice. Sometimes it may feel a little bit harsh, but they tell the truth. And for some of you, I feel like there could be, if there's a relationship that's breaking up, there could be some legal things going on that you're concerned about, and you might need to talk to you might need a lawyer, or some or talk to someone for advice to figure out how to proceed. Because here in your environment, you have this Eight of Cups. This is a card of walking away from something towards something better. So you're leaving something behind, something that was once good that's no longer fulfilling. And moving on towards something better. Like you you feel like I, I need to change my life. I need to have more fulfillment, more spiritual fulfillment in my life if I'm in a relationship. So if you're if you're leaving one relationship, you're in search of a better connection. A connection that can bring more positive energy, more fulfilling energy into your life. And so you're doing a lot of evaluating too. Um, thinking about where you've been, thinking about where you're going. Um if you haven't left yet, you're in the process of doing that or because there's conflict around this. There could be maybe if you're leaving a relationship, there's conflict with the details of separation. You know, there could be some legal issues if you're in a marriage or a, or a committed partnership. If you're not in a relationship, then it could just be um, that you're trying to change your life and you're trying to figure out what direction to go in. And you have some conflicts around what you really want and what you're looking for. Like here you have the, the page of, I mean, the Seven of Pentacles. Sevens represent transition. And you have the Seven of Swords here as an outcome. So you are in a transition period in January. Um, the good thing is the worst is over. But I don't think things will come to a head. Things might come to a head at this full moon in Cancer. And we'll get into that later. Um, certain truths may surface and you'll see exactly what's going on. So you'll get some clarity around the full moon and then you'll know where, where to take action or what to, to do. Here you're planting seeds and you're wondering, you're kind of evaluating where you're going and what's going to come out of these new seeds that you're planting. So there could be a new relationship in the wings because the Two of Cups is in a position of something that's just developing. So you might have leaving one relationship, starting just the beginning stages in a new relationship, and wondering where it's going to go, wondering what the outcome will be. So you have a lot on your mind, but you really shouldn't rush anything. With the Knight of Pentacles, I think you're taking your time. You're not rushing into anything. You may have come out of a difficult relationship or a difficult situation, or you may still be uh, feeling the, the fallout from that experience and so you don't want to rush into anything you want to just take your time and let things happen naturally and look at relationships in a more realistic with a more realistic eye rather than a more idealistic eye you know in the past you might have met someone and felt like oh this is my soulmate and you jump into it really quickly this time I think you're going to take things slow because you want to be sure that you're on the right path and you have this Seven of Swords. That could be tricky energy. Um, you may feel that you were betrayed in, in a relationship, that someone wasn't being totally honest with you, 
Maybe someone was trying to steal something from you, take something from you. Uh, or it could be that your own, you're keeping your plans uh, quiet because you're trying to escape from a situation. You don't want people to know what you're up to. So it could work out two ways. Either your, your partner has kind of been on, you, you haven't trusted your partner, you feel like a partner is deceiving you. Or you are in the process of making some changes and you're not, while things are being developed, you don't want to let people know what you're up to. Another way that this could play, uh, another meaning for the Seven of Swords is not facing the truth in a situation. So if you've been in a relationship and sweeping things under the rug, or if you have a problem that you're trying to deal with and you're not facing the truth about it, the Seven of Swords is saying you're going to have to, you're going to face the truth. You're going to have to stop running from the truth. You have to stop sweeping things under the rug. You're going to have to really face reality and um, take action and really face what you need to face so that you can move on, so you can make changes um, that, we're go that are going to be better for you in the future, especially with the death card. This is the only major arcana in the spread. The death represents clearing the old, clearing out the old, blessing it, Releasing it, this is the perfect time of year for that. The end of the year, to look back and review your life and see what you need to let go of. Where have you, uh, you know, what is it that you're still holding on to from the past that you need to release? And that could be relationships, it could be friendships, it could be behaviors or ways of thinking that have been standing in your way that have been blocking you. Past patterns. And because you're on the edge of a, of a new cycle, you, but you need to clear out the old first. You need, ha you need to resolve that internal conflict and, you know, step fresh into the new year, into the new cycle, preparing for, without the baggage of the past. So if you need counseling to get through that, that would be a good thing to do. But you have to admit that something is ended, something is over, and see the truth, and then move on. And you are moving on. You are going to be moving on. So let's see, this full moon in Cancer is happening in your 12th house, and then you have all these planets in the 6th house. Sun, Mercury, Saturn, Pluto. So the 6th house re represents employment, it represents health. So there could be, for some of you, you could be leaving a job, or something could be coming to completion around the work that you do. If you, have you been sacrificing too much um, for others, and now you need to move on to something more fulfilling? If you haven't been taking care of your health, this, there could be some kind of wake-up call at this full moon where you suddenly realize, I have to change my habits. Because Saturn and Pluto are going to be coming together on the 12th, two days after this full moon. Now the moon, the full moon, usually brings things to light. So if there have been any secrets, especially with the moon in your 12th house, if there's any um, thing that you need to know, and it could be connected to your past, it could be connected to your mother, Maybe have issues around a female figure in your life that you need to resolve on a psychological level. Um, because the 12th house is your unconscious. It's also the way, it, it's hidden enemies, but it's also um, the way we self-sabotage. So you could have some psychological blocks around fem women, around mothers. Um, there could be a woman in your life that has been operating behind the scenes and now the truth comes out. All of these things could happen. Um, it's a very emotional time when the moon is in Cancer and there's a full moon in Cancer. So if something is ending or completing at this time or being revealed at this time, you could be feeling emotional about it. And um, the only thing I could say that's good is that the truth is going to set you free. When you see the truth, you're going to know how you need to move, what you need to do to move forward. Uh, Mars is going through your fifth house, so that's activating something around children, creative self-expression, new romance. So there could be a new romance on the horizon. So maybe you're ending one relationship because certain things came out. Um, they will be very, very um, visible at this full moon. Uranus is in your tenth house, so there could be a change in status, a sudden opportunity to free yourself from a situation. It could be a relationship like a marriage, or it could be a a job, a career, 
the 10th house has to do with career opportunities. Jupiter is now moving into the, your 6th house um, in Capricorn. So Jupiter is bringing opportunity. So for those of you who are not leaving a relationship, you could be leaving a job or changing the work that you do in some way so that it, you're, you feel freer. Um, but, the, but you do have some things that you need to um, look at more carefully because the 12th house represents a psychological cleansing and releasing old karma, releasing baggage. And this full moon can help you to do that. Uranus has been retrograde for the past several months, almost like six months or so. It's now going to start to go direct on January 11th, the day after. I mean, a lot of stuff is happening in this weak little pocket of three days. <laughs> you have the full moon in Cancer, Uranus going direct, and then Pluto and Saturn coming together. So if there's anything that you haven't been wanting to see, you have to face the truth at this time. Because Uranus is can represent surprising developments, things that come out of the blue, and it's trining Jupiter. So this could be opportunity. There's an opportunity coming for to help you to see what the truth and help you to release and make changes. Saturn and Pluto coming together is like critical mass. Things have been building up for a long time. Um, you can't deny them anymore. You're, something has to give. Pluto demands transformation change. Saturn demands that you see the truth, take responsibility, and take action. And Jupiter is bringing you an opportunity, a lucky break. Jupiter and Uranus coming together is like a lucky break. So it's like the guardian angel in the middle of a crisis. So you might be having some kind of crisis happen around the full moon. But there's a there's like someone, there's a helping hand helping you to get through it. But you have to be willing to let go of what you need to let go of. If something gets destroyed at this time, release it, let it go, because it's preparing you for a new life or a better path. Um, and it's time to take action. It could be around, something could be happening around children. Um, or a new romance can ch help change your life in some way. Where you're, you're going to feel more energetic around. And what might help you in your healing is some type of creative self-expression. Um, that will help you um, release whatever tensions that might be building up at this time. Then we have a new moon in your seventh house on January 24th in Aquarius. Um, there's some tension around this full moon because it's squaring Uranus. So something is happening that um, will necessitate a sudden change. Uranus in the 10th house is sudden. You have Venus and Neptune coming together at this new moon. And they're going to be in your 8th house. So you could be forming, you could be connecting with someone that you could have a really strong, intimate connection. It could, be, it could feel like a soulmate connection. And this person, it could transform your life in some way. And it could also have something to do with healing. You could find, um, the relationship could be a healing uh, connection for you. And it could be with someone, since it's happening in the ninth house, someone that's very different from you. Someone could be... Someone from who lives at a distance or in a foreign, who's someone who's from a different culture than you, and someone who expands your uh, your awareness in some way. Because the ninth house is about um, long distance travel, foreign cultures, your belief systems, your spirituality, higher education, teaching, learning. So this relationship is going to teach you a lot. Or it's going to expand your mind and change your thoughts on certain subjects around spirituality. Um, it could be kind of something of a soulmate type connection with Neptune there. You also have to be careful when Neptune, if, it, if you're not working in the art field, Neptune can represent glamour or deception. So you might be being very idealistic with this new relationship. Take it slow, calm yourself down. Um, it could be a great relationship, but you don't want to get caught up in you know, idealization, giving people, you know, give someone time to prove themselves. But it looks good, though. When Venus, Venus, Neptune conjunction is very romantic, very um, glamorous. Jupiter's in your seventh house. And Venus in Pisces and Neptune in Pisces is being trined by Jupiter. And so this is a lucky time for partnerships. When Jupiter's in your seventh, you have a, 
a greater chance at connecting with someone who is a true partner or a true soulmate. So this could be happening as well. Like I said, if you've been through a difficult time in the past, that's ending. That's over. Don't carry that into this new year. Let it go. And this relationship, I think, looks very promising. You also have... Well, actually, Jupiter's in the sixth house. Sorry. Um, but it's Jupiter brings opportunity to help you work on your health and make new changes. And it could also be an employment opportunity when it's in the sixth house. So... Um, your relationship with coworkers could be improving. Mars in the fifth. You're you're really if you're looking for a relationship, you're going to focus a lot of energy on Mars. Mercury's in the seventh house. Mercury, um, if you're meeting someone new, it could be someone who's a really good communicator, or the two of you have good communication together. You can talk about anything. Uh, Mercury's a good. It's a good planet to have in the seventh house when you're trying to form a. Sign a contract. So if you're developing a new business plan or a business partnership, this can bring um, luck with that too. But um, the main thing is that your the community, Mercury is is about your th your thinking and your communication skills. So you could be connecting with someone who has very um, innovative ideas. And that can help you both in business and in your personal life. So this part, if you're meeting a romantic partner, this partner is going to be very communicative. You're going to be talking. You're going to spend a lot of time just talking to each other. That's the main attraction. And sharing ideas. Uh, if it's a business partnership, it's going to be a lucky connection or a, a favorable connection to do something different, to do something innovative. So the two of you might be you know, creating some type of plan to launch something unique. Um, especially now that Uranus is going direct, if if you felt blocked in your career or in your life path, not knowing which direction to go in or wanting to make changes, but feeling like you were stuck in the mud, Uranus moving forward is going to um, unblock that energy and things should happen. Now with Uranus, things are usually happen by surprise. You know, you can't plan what Uranus is going to bring. Um, usually it's what you least expect. And Uranus is ruling your seventh house of partnership. So a partnership connection should could come out of the blue, out of nowhere. All of a sudden you start developing feelings for someone. Or it could be a career opportunity where you're partnering with someone to work on something that involves technology or um, the internet or something that is innovative and um, out of the box. So I think for the most part for January what I'm seeing is you're releasing something that wasn't working, you're putting, you know, the past to rest, but there are some, there are the seeds of new beginnings are starting to form, and the new beginnings in a way of life, that is going to be very good for you. Uh, harmony is going to be returning to your life, so if you've been involved in a lot of conflict, maybe with past partners or past issues, that is going to be changing. So plant your seeds um, and watch them grow. And if you've been through a difficult time, take some time out to rest. And I think you'll, you're going to find people around you. You're going to be connecting with people that can really be helpful to you and healing to you. And take care of yourself physically too. Don't neglect your health. If you need to make certain lifestyle changes so that your health um, is improved, do that as well. Don't neglect yourself. Uh, sometimes when people go through difficult times or they're working really hard, they neglect their health. Um, so you want to be strong so you can take advantage of all these new opportunities coming your way. But um, So I think January is going to be a turning point for you. It's going to be You're going to be in transition. And the transition is from a difficult dark time, the old way, transitioning into a brighter um, scene. Something that's more fitting, more fulfilling. So that is my forecast, Leo, for the month of January. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it resonated with you. I want to say Happy New Year. I wish you much luck and love in the coming year and success. And thank you everyone who has been supporting this channel by liking, by subscribing, by ordering readings. I appreciate all of you and I love all of you and I wish you all the best. Uh, and I thank you for your support. And I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.